Hello, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Welcome to Empower Hour. Come on in, come on in, come on in. God is good and very, 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 very good. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all come on in. God bless you. Hello, hello, hello. Come on in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank y'all for coming. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday and you have found me, Evangelist Crystal Henry. We have a great word on tonight. Come on in. God said he's got help for the vision. Somebody say help for the vision. So y'all come on in. Let me make sure that y'all can hear me. Let me know if you can hear me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on in. God is good and worthy to be praised. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let me know where you're coming from. Let me know where you are. Let me know if you are warm. Because some of you are not warm. There we go. Some of you are not warm. Some of you are in very cold places. Cold front has come through. And so... Um, it, what a predicament, what a predicament it has been. But I want to thank God for you and praise the Lord for you. So come on in and let's wait a few minutes while um, we get some more people in here. We are talking about help for the vision, help for the vision. So it's going to be a great word on tonight, a great word for 2019 hello lady miyoshi god bless you so good to have you here thank you thank you for coming it's a great time for you to share you can share praise the lord because somebody else is going to need this word on tonight somebody else is going to need it amen so praise the lord i am excited Thank you all for coming on in. God is good, good, good. And so we will get started in a few minutes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. I just want to set up um, uh, Instagram real quick before we get started. And uh, we'll get ready for the word. We're talking about talking about help for the vision on tonight. We are on Periscope and Facebook and Instagram. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise God. Hallelujah. So just a few more minutes and we will get started. Just come on in. Hey, Sister Gloria. Hey, Sister Rhonda. Thanks for joining. Praise God for you. There is a great word on tonight. God is going to be dealing with us um, in Psalms, Psalms 89 and in Habakkuk 2 and 2. So let me know if you can hear me. If you can hear me, praise the Lord. And let's see, it's time to get started. So uh, we're gonna, I'm going to pray and then we're going to deal with Habakkuk 2, 2 and 3 and uh, Psalms 89. Amen. God is sending help for the vision. So this is for all those people that need help for their vision. Help for the very thing that God has given them for 2019. Amen. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we bless your name. We praise you. We exalt you. We honor you, Lord God. There's nobody like you, Lord God, in all the earth. Lord God, we thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, Lord God. We thank you for your love and your kindness. We thank you, Father God, for your word on tonight, most of all, God. We thank you for how you are going to move by your power in this word, how you're going to touch your people on today, Father God. And we just thank you and praise you for your goodness and your mercy, Lord. So, Father, 
We ask you to bless the vision, Lord God. Bless what you have given us to do. Show us how to carry it out. Give us the strategies we need, Lord God. Give us, bless the work of our hands. Put things in our hands that we need to carry out the tasks, the duties, Lord God, and your will, Father God. Lord, help us. Lord God, not go astray from the vision that you have given us, Father God, and help us, Lord God, do your perfect will. So, Father, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. We glorify you, Father. Have your way on tonight. Bless these, your people. Lord, if there's anyone sick among us, Lord God, when they get off this um, broadcast, I pray that they will feel a refreshing. They will feel um, a renewal, that they will be healed in the name of Jesus. If there's anyone um, that's needing help, I'm praying that you will send help immediately, Lord God, because you are a very present help in the time of trouble. So, Lord, I pray, Father, that you will send help in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, bless this word on tonight. Bless these, your people, and do it in a mighty and a powerful way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen again. Amen. So y'all, thank y'all for joining. Again, hearts are always in order. Please give hearts. Please give thumbs up. Um, shout out to me. I'm saying hello to you. So please shout out. Tell me where you're coming from. Just say hello. Amen. And so I just want to um, praise God and thank God for y'all and for joining on tonight. There is a word from the Lord. God said he is going to send help for the vision. Amen. Help for the vision. So let's start with the vision. It's 2019. Some of you have already had vision board parties. You've already written down your vision. Maybe some things didn't get accomplished in the last couple of years and you've just kept it on your vision board until God accomplishes that. But God said, I gave you a vision. I gave you a vision. I gave you um, uh, inspiration. I've given you something, um, a creative idea. I've given you an innovative idea. I've given you foresight. I have given you a new view, a new perspective. So now how do we carry this new perspective out? How do we carry out this vision? How does this vision go from a thought in my mind? Hey, thank you for coming from Mesquite, Texas. I appreciate you. How does this vision go from a thought in my mind, from a, something vivid when my eyes are closed, God will give me a vision, but when my eyes are open, hey mom, thanks for joining, when my eyes are open, how do I carry out this vision? How do I carry out the thought and, in, and bring it into manifestation? How do I carry out this God's will? God surely put it on my heart. God surely inspired me to do this. So how do I go from something that I can see with my eyes closed, something that I can dream about? Hey, Liz, thanks for joining. God bless you. How can I go from what I see in my mind's eye, what I see with my eyes closed, to what I can actually carry out, not, not only on paper, but manifest, manifest it. How do I get from the thought, the vision, to carrying out the task? Well, God said, I'm sending you help tonight for your vision. Yes, you put it on a vision board. Yes, you may have um, desired to do this in 2019. Maybe you desired to do it in 2018 and it didn't happen. It didn't come to pass. God says, fear not, worry not. We're going to bring it to pass in 2019. It's going to happen. Hey, good evening. Good evening. So excited that you're here. So we're going to start with Habakkuk, Habakkuk 2 and 2. Habakkuk 2 and 2. And God has just been blessing. I know that February is going to be a month of double, double blessing. I keep hearing this from other prophets. I keep hearing double, double blessing. Well, before you enter in, into February, because this is the last Wednesday of January, the last Wednesday of January for 2019. So I want you to be effective. I want you um, to carry out a great and effective work in 2019. And I believe that this word is going to push you. This word is going to help you carry it out. Amen. 
So Habakkuk 2 and 2, um, it starts off saying, then the Lord answered me and said, so when God has an answer for you, he, he's, he allows you to hear the answer. He allows you to get the word. Amen. He allows you to get this word. So you're here because you need this word. You're here because you need some help with your vision. Amen. And so it says, write the vision. So many of us, when we do a vision board, we put out the vision board, we put pictures on it, we put words on it, we pray over it, we really think about it, we dream about it, we hope for it, right? That's what we do when we do a vision board. And God says, write the vision. So what he gives you in your mind's eye, what he gives you when you think about it, when, when, you, when you're thinking and your imagination is running wild, um, that vision, he's saying, write it down. Write it down. I'm going to do a conference in 2019. What's the name of the conference? Write it down. Who do you want to invite? Invite. Who, are you, who is your target audience? Is it everybody that's here with me on Wednesday night? Is it people that see me on Tuesday at 2 with my husband? Is it people that come to my church? Is it people that I know from other churches? Uh, maybe it's my coworkers. Maybe it's the kids that I teach in Sunday school. Maybe it's some of my friends' friends. Maybe it's some of my family members. I don't know what God has called you to do in 2019, but God said, I've given you a vision. Write it down. Write that vision down. We've already done our vision boards. We got it on the board, right? So now what do I do? Write the vision and make it plain. Put it on paper, put it on boards, put it, uh, take pictures of what you desire, of how you desire to see it. Google it. Somebody say Google. Google it. Google is your friend. How can I carry out my vision? What do I need? What are the things that I need for my vision? Do I need a computer? Do I need flyers? Do I need um, a website? Do I need email? How do I email people? How do I get their emails? All these type of questions, all these things, we need to write the vision out. And it says, and make it plain. Make it plain. If you're putting it in your phone, type it in your phone and make it plain. If you're taking a picture of it, take a picture write some notes and make it plain. Make it plain so you don't forget. But guess what? One person, you can't think of everything. I'm encouraging you. The vision that God gave you, pray about that vision. Now, it doesn't say pray about it here. No, the word prayer is not in here, but it says write the vision, make it plain on tablets, on paper, in your phone, um, on your Facebook page, on your website, make it plain. And then it says, then he, that he may run who reads it. Uh-oh. That he may run who reads it. So guess what you got to do with your vision? You got to share it. Somebody say share it. Share it. You have to share your vision. And I know we are afraid to share our visions. Why? Because we think somebody's going to take our ideas. But guess what? There's nothing new under the sun. The way we may um, reach people, the way we may do it, the way we may, we may carry out that vision, it might be different. It might have a different name, but the same ideas, right? But what God has for you, what God has for you, what God has for you is for you. And you're not going to miss out. You're not going to lose out on the vision that God has given to you. But how do you get your vision to your help? You've got to write it. You've got to share it. Yes, you've got to share it. You have to share it somewhere so that the person that reads your vision will be like, I'm running with it. That does not mean they're going to run away with it. They're going to run alongside of you with it. Wow. What a concept. 
See, we're so used to people. We're so used to competition. We're so used to competition in the world, competition in the church, competition in the body of Christ, competition at our jobs, competition in school, competition on the court, on the basketball court, on the football field. We're, we're so used to competition that we're afraid to write it. We're afraid to share it. But guess what? You need help for your vision, for the vision that God gave you. God is going to give you a little niche. He's going to give you a place. He's going to give you a people. He's going to give you a nation. He's got help for you, but don't be afraid. Should we be careful who we share it with? Yes. You need to be careful who you share it with because some people will be like, that is such a big vision that you can't even do it. People will try to discourage you. Yes, people will try to discourage you. But how do I know the right one is with me? Prayer, discernment, amen, discernment. And if they're running alongside of you, guess what? And this is a really... This was a hard thing to learn um, as a pastor, as an evangelist, as a minister. Starting our ministry, starting our church in our living room. We did that 19 years. It'll be 19 years in September. 19 years in September. Hello, Sister Elaine. It'll be 19 years in September when we started our church in our living room on September 10th. Um, 9, 10, 2000. Isn't that amazing? And so when we did that, um, God gave my husband the vision, the mission, the priorities, the goals. He gave us a layout plan of the church. Now, everybody that came to our church didn't catch the vision. Hey, Sarah Ross Terry, God bless you. Thank you for coming on in. Everybody that came to our church didn't um, catch the vision. Everybody that came to our church, um, some people was like, oh yes, I, I believe God. I believe God sent me here. Let's do this. Some people were like, no, that doesn't seem right. No, we don't need to do that. We need to do it this way. So not everybody is going to um, catch the vision that God gives you. But you have to be sure about the vision that God gave you. And so that you will not get off the task. You need to write the vision. And so sometimes we need to go back and revisit that vision, right? Can you imagine um, getting the vision for uh, Power of the Gospel Ministries? And now it's 19 years later and the words that God gave my husband 19 years ago are still holding strong. See, that's what it means by the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. The gates of hell shall not prevail. There might, you might be have ups and you might have downs, but the vision stands firm. And we're going to get more clarity on that when we get to Psalms 89. Amen. And so here it's saying that he may run who reads it. So we know we got to share it. Verse three says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. So God will give you more than one thing. God gives us more than one thing. He gives us different things over and over again. And so what he gave for this month or for this year or for this week or for next week, he's going to give you different things. And so it's going to be prayer. It's going to be um, vision. It's going to be um, writing it down. It's going to be researching it out. As to when, God, when do I carry out this vision? What, what do you have for me to carry out in 2019? What do you have for me to carry out in February? Okay, God, we've already started this year. We've already started. We've gotten, um, this is our last week in 2019. And so now what do I need to do to get into February 2019? What vision is it? So that's, that's where we are. So we got to share it. We need to remember that it's for an appointed time. So don't get discouraged because sometimes the vision is so big. Have y'all ever um, done a budget? Have you ever done a projected budget? 
A projected budget means I'm going to write some things down that I want to do for 2019. And I'm going to say, this is the budget. This is the money I'm going to need to carry this out. And then I'm going to say, now I can do this step in 2019. I can do this piece in 2020. I can do this piece in 2021. So you might have a projected vision where the vision is so big that you're going to have to pray and ask God, what are the pieces? Is this going to be a quick vision? Because just like God gave me the vision for this word on tonight, it was a quick vision. It was a quick word. And God said, yes, I want my people to know that I'm sending help for their vision. But let them know what a vision is. Prepare their mind. Start stirring up the juices. Start stirring up the inspiration. Start stirring up their imagination. Start stirring up their creativity. Uh, encourage them to Google, encourage them to write the vision and make it plain because the help that you need, they're going to pick it up, they're going to read it, and they're going to run with it. Not run away with it, but they're going to run alongside you with it. Sometimes I might run ahead of you and prepare stuff for you to make it easier. Y'all, I just described what help is. Let me read some synonyms for the word help. So that you get an understanding of not only what the vision is, but the help that you need. So first of all, a vision is the view that makes way for a purpose, promise, or destiny. Y'all got that? The vision is a view, a view, a perception, a view that makes a way for a purpose, a promise, or a destiny. Good stuff. How do I get this vision? Uh, I'm gonna my my vision will manifest through creativity, through my imagination, through innovation, through inspiration, through foresight, through discernment, with my eyesight. Right? That's how the vision will manifest with these different techniques: creativity, imagination, innovation, inspiration perception, foresight, discernment, and eyesight. And the vision is a view that makes way for a purpose, a promise, or a destiny. Now, help. How, what, what kind of help do I have for my vision? Help. Help is something that makes things easier. So that's why when I said somebody, somebody may get your vision, they may view your vision and then they'll be like, oh, and then they'll take off running ahead of you. They'll put, st they'll prepare things for you to make it easier so that when you reach to them, they've already made the way easier and, and your vision is able to continue and be built on what they built. Amen. Um, help is someone who offers their services. They offer their services. They offer to help you. Not take over, but offer to help you with your vision. An aide. Anybody know of someone that's a nurse's aide? They're not the nurse, but they're the aide to the nurse. They're the help to the nurse. What God is saying, I'm sending you an aide for your vision. I'm sending you an assistant for your vision. Amen? Or assistance. I'm sending you a team. Your, your team will read your vision. Your team will get you the idea. Your team will be sent by God. Your team will be the present help that you need so that the, the uh, vision can manifest in 2019. God said, yes, be cautious. Be cautious like he says in his word. Um, be cautious, but still... Entertain those angels. See, sometimes we entertain angels unaware. Sometimes God sends the very thing we need. And if we're mean, if we're rude, then we won't get the help that we need. We, we are so skeptical. We're, we've been hurt so much. Stuff has been stolen from us before that we don't want to give anybody our idea or we don't want to give anybody place to help us. Because we've been hurt, we've been um, taken advantage of. But God is saying, I'm sending you help for your vision. 
I'm going to give you a vision and I'm going to send you help for your vision. Let's continue on with the synonyms, the definition of help. He's going to send you assistance. Assistance. An assistant is not is an assistant is not the person that does everything. Sometimes we get confused with what an assistant is for. See, a CEO or a CFO, they have to make big decisions. They have to make million dollar, trillion dollar decisions. Yes. Assistant in the vision. There are different people that, um, in what form? The assistance can come in a form of a person. Assistance can come in a form of finances. Assistance can come in a form of um, multiple hands, laborers, people that will labor. Assistance can come from somebody that has already been through the vision that God is asking uh, or God has shown you. Oh, the, oh, it does. It keeps stopping. Huh, I wonder why it keeps stopping. Sorry, Sister Rhonda. I don't know why it keeps stopping. Let me see if there's anything. Hmm. It's it's very clear. I'm and I'm seeing my I'm moving. I'm actually watching myself on um on um Maybe it is in your area. If you go out and come back in, I, at Periscope, Instagram, everybody else is saying it's fine. It's, it's doing very well. So I'm sorry. Maybe if you go out and come back in or you can find me on Instagram or Facebook. That'll be a, a, another view. Maybe that will be better for you. But um, as I was saying, assistance. If there is a CFO or CEO, they're the ones that make the billion dollar, the million dollar, the half a million dollar um, um, decisions, but they need their assistant. They need their assistant to um, do things administratively. Maybe they need them to write letters, uh, send emails, pick up things for them. Uh, an assistant is someone that is helping the leader, helping the one in charge, helping the one that God um, gave the vision to. Yes. Um, hopefully you'll be able to come back and watch it if you can't watch it all right now. Um, what el what uh, help is, another form of help is guidance. Um, sometimes we ask for, mm, yeah, sometimes bosses do help. I mean, bosses hurt more than they help. Um, and sometimes they don't even realize that they're doing it. But some, um, we need guidance. Uh, there's an assistant that can guide you. Someone that's been that way before. Um, somebody that has wisdom in that area. You know, maybe you are a new entrepreneur and you need somebody that's gotten, that has maybe five, six, ten years of entrepreneurship that can help you out, that can guide you, that can give you some tips. Amen? Mm. Wow. Well, that's not good. Um, doing wrong uh, because somebody else did you wrong it doesn't make it right. Amen. Two wrongs don't make it right. Assistant is someone that has a solution. Um, I always say I'm a solutionist. Um, God will give me vision to solve problems and I will give the answer or give several different ideas that can help somebody solve their problem. Amen. Mm, yes, very windy. Yes, it's um, very windy and it's also a uh, cold fronts coming through. So y'all keep warm and let's keep going with this Bible study. So solutions, an assistant, a help, an aid, they will give you solutions for your places where you get stuck at. When you're starting something new, when you're starting something fresh, when you're starting something from scratch, you may come against um, something that will hinder you from making progress. Um, perfect example right now um, at work, I had everything lined up and, and um, made some headway on getting some formulas and formats set up to make my job easier. Well, now they've changed the format. Now they've changed the way um, they would like to see the view, the view of my reports. So now because they want to change how my reports look, I got to go in and, and create all new formulas, create different names, different tabs, and change the way my same data 
The same, it's the same information, same material that's coming in, but I just got to make it look different. And so that's like a vision. God gives us a vision. And even though he may give me a vision that's similar to you, but the way I might go about it, how I might present it might be totally different. Guess what? There are millions of teachers in the land. Teachers in India, teachers in Hawaii, teachers in, in Africa, teachers in uh, Australia. There are millions of teachers all over the world. But guess what? They all teach differently. History teachers teach math, I mean, teach history different than the math teacher. Amen? So just because I teach different than Beth Moore, you know, you may teach different than me, but However we're doing it, we're still doing the same task. There's still a vision for me to teach. Amen. God has given me a vision for me to teach and teach in different venues and different places and different avenues. So that's, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here on Periscope. That's why I'm here on Instagram. That's why I'm here on Facebook because I'm reaching, touching, teaching people the same word but on a different venue, the same word, and it, and it looks different. Guess what? I look totally different on Facebook than I do on Periscope. The view on Instagram is different than my view on Facebook and Periscope. So don't be afraid to share your vision. And just know that God will send you help. He's going to give you assistance. He's going to send people that will offer their services. He will send people that will guide you through. He will send people that will support you. They'll support you financially. They'll support you physically. They will support you. They will encourage you. They will advise you. God is, is going to send help that will advise you. God is going to send helping hands that will be your labor. Maybe I can't carry a thousand pounds, but if I get 10 people that will help me carry pieces of the thousand pounds, we can get it done. Amen. So write the vision, make it plain so that, um, make it plain on tables so that our tablets, paper, posters, Make it plain. Facebook, make it plain. Make it plain on your video. Make it plain on your blog. However God, on your book, however God desires you, on your book study, your study guide, however God designs for you to make your vision plain, then the person that reads it, the person that picks it up and catches your vision will run with you. They won't run away with it, but they'll run with you. They will be your assistant. They will be there to help make things easier. They will be there to be your guide, to assist you, to give you solutions along the way. They will be there to support you. Whether you might need support financially, maybe somebody um, that writes grants, if anybody writes grants that would love to contact me, I need some help with um, some grants. Uh, we, we need some help. We need some finances. So if you write grants, let me give you the vision that God gave me and maybe you can write a grant. Maybe you can be my solution. Maybe you can be my assistant. Maybe you can assist me. Maybe you can be my solution, my um, support. Amen? Maybe because of what you do, um, you can even write your own salary into the grant and get paid for it where I don't have the money to pay you. The grant can pay you. So there's different things that we can do as the body of Christ, as a body of believers, as women of God, as men of God, as apostles, as prophets. Um, a prophet can get a word, can get a vision and go to the person and say, God told me to tell you this. Why? Because you've gotten off track from your vision. You've gotten off track of what he gave you to do. Or you're right on track. God just told me to, to get on here tonight and encourage you. Keep on going with the vision. Don't stop now. God is going to manifest it. Keep asking for help. Keep, um, uh, keep 
searching people out. Keep on praying. God is going to send support. So God is saying, don't give up now. Don't quit in the process. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to push you a little further into 2019. Push you a little further into your promise. What did we say the vision was? A promise, a purpose, or a destiny. That's what vision. Vision is to um, create something. So keep on going with the vision. God bless you, Elder Terry. Thank you for coming on in the room. Thank you for coming and getting this word because God is going to give you help for your vision. Guess what? Um, I had to learn things about Facebook. I had to watch other people do things. I had to learn about Periscope. I had to learn about Instagram. I had to go in and, and learn different techniques on the different venues, different avenues that God gave me to teach. And so God is saying, just be faithful over the few things and I will make you ruler over many. God is saying, don't stop. Be consistent. When you are consistent, hello, Sister Deb. Hello, Pastor Michelle. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming on in. And so here we are, we're talking about vision and we're talking about when we write the vision, when we make it plain that those that read it will run, not away with it, but run with you. Verse three um, says that it's for an appointed time that it will, at the end, it will speak. Thanks for the heart, Sister Debbie. Thank y'all for the hearts. He said at the end of the appointed time, it will speak. So that means that the vision that God gives you, the, the, um, the, the view that you see when your eyes are closed, God is saying it's going to speak and it's going to speak loudly. What is it going to speak? It's going to speak your purpose. What is it going to speak? Your promise. What is it going to speak? Your destiny. That's what vision does. It creates um, an atmosphere of creativity. It creates an atmosphere of inspiration. That's what the vision does. It creates an atmosphere of get up and do it. That's what vision does. It creates an atmosphere to for you to get up and do it. Hey, Lady Tammy, God bless you. Thank you for joining. That atmosphere is powerful. Amen. And so that's what God does. And so he says that though it tarries, though the vision may take a little while, maybe you're going to do a conference and maybe your conference isn't coming up till September. Well, it's good. It, this, there's eight months before your vision is going to come to pass, but there are steps along the way for you to get things done in order for the full manifestation of your vision to come to pass. So God's saying, though it tarries, wait for it. But while you're awaiting, God is going to send you help. He's going to send you assistance. He's going to send you guidance. He's going to send you solutions to any problems that may come up. He's going to send you support. He's going to send you helping hands. So don't be afraid of what God sends you. Don't be afraid to join forces. Don't be afraid because um, the body of Christ Men of God, women of God, we're put here. If every part is doing their share, yes, if every part is doing their share, then the one that God gave the vision to, the, the vision won't fail. The vision won't fall. The visionary, the visionary is the one that gets the vision. The visionary won't be discouraged. The visionary won't fall down and quit. The visionary won't be like, I can't do this. I got to stop. I, I, this is too much. The visionary will be like, oh, this is my helping hand. Oh, this is my solutionist. Oh, this is my assistant. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for $5. Thank you for $3. Thank you for $10. Thank you for $1,000. Whatever it is, God is going to send you help. But don't reject the help that he sends you. Verse 3 goes on to say, because it will surely come. God gave you a vision and it will surely come. God gave you a vision and it will surely manifest. God gave you a vision and it's going to come to pass. Now let's not sabotage what God gave us. Visionaries. Hello, 
visionaries, I'm talking to you, visionaries, yes, you are the ones that God gave a vision to. Do not um, abort, do not stop your vision that God gave you. Now flip over with me to Psalms 89. I want you to go to Psalms 89 and 19. Y'all there? Psalms 89 and 19. This is to encourage you. This is to instruct you. This is to give you uh, inspiration. This is to stir you up. Amen? So here it is, Psalms 89 and verse 19. The word of God reads, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. It reads, then you spoke in a vision. Then you spoke in a vision to your holy one. I'm talking to the people of God. God has spoke to you in a vision. Remember, he said over here in Habakkuk 2 and 2, it says, um, then the Lord answered me and said, and I see you on Periscope, but that doesn't have anything to do with what we're talking about, the vision. What does your vision say that I am? <laughs> so let's keep going. Uh, Psalms 89 and 19. Then you spoke in a vision to your Holy One. So God is speaking to you on tonight. God is speaking to you. God spoke to you when he gave you a vision. God spoke to you when he inspired you. God spoke to you when he um, gave you the view of your purpose, gave you the view of your promise, gave you the view of your destiny. God spoke to you. So he's saying, hey, I gave you this vision. And then it goes on to say in Psalms 89 and 19, I have given help to one who is mighty. So you may, this might be the biggest vision that God has ever given you. Trust me. When God gave us the vision for the church, that was the biggest vision he ever gave us. And 19 years later, the church is still standing. 19 years later, our church is paid off without ever having a building fund or selling dinners. Church is paid off, thank God. Only God can do stuff like that. The vision was huge and massive. And God's not done with the vision yet. Huh. So he says, and I and said, I have given help to one who is mighty. So you might have been doing things all this time. And it's like, okay, I, I did this little project and only 20 people came or only 10 people came. But God is giving you a huge vision, like a forest of trees. You might have had a vision where it was just a little garden with maybe two plants. And God is saying, I got a forest for you because you were faithful over the two plants. Now I've got a forest for you to handle. And God is saying, you don't have to do it by yourself. You don't have to be overwhelmed. Amen. He said, I have given help to one who is mighty. Why did he give you a vision? Why are you a visionary? Because you are mighty in God. Why are you a visionary? Because you pray. Why are you a visionary? Because you've been faithful over a few things. Why are you a visionary? No, not because you're perfect. Moses wasn't perfect. David wasn't perfect. And we're going to talk about David in just a second. The next verse. Nobody is perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a visionary. You don't have to be perfect to carry a large, huge, massive, mega vision. You don't have to be. T.D. Jakes was not, um, had a small church. T.D. Jakes did not have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people. He didn't start, he didn't come out the womb. He didn't come out of his ordination preaching to a hundred thousand people. Come on, somebody. But TD, God gave T.D. Jakes a mega vision and he couldn't carry it out by himself. All right. He sent helpers. He sent support. He sent people. Ricky Rush, another pastor in Dallas. Ricky Rush, he couldn't accomplish it by himself. He has a huge mega church, right? And guess what? Um, I found out that his church is on top of an, a water aquifer. Guess where he got support from? From the city of Dallas pays him for his water that's on his property, that's underneath his property, underneath what? The church. And so the city pays him 
for the water. That's support. God is saying the reason why you are on here tonight, the reason why you came by is God gave you a vision, a vision of purpose, a vision of promise, a vision of destiny. And God saying, I'm going to give you support. I'm going to make it easier for you. I'm going to offer services. I'm going to send assistance. I'm going to send helping hands. I'm going to send solutionists. I'm going to give you people that will give you advice. I'm going to give you people that have already been this way before and they will guide you through this big part. I'm going to help you. Yes, God gives the vision and the provision. Stick to the plan. That's right, Pastor Michelle. Stick to the plan. God will give you vision and the provision. So I'm just telling you here on tonight, God said, I'm giving you help for the vision. You don't have to do it alone, but trust me, when he sends help, they're going to read what you're doing. They're going to get excited about it and they're going to run with it. Not a run away, but run alongside of you. Maybe sometimes they'll even run ahead of you and make things easier for you when you get there. Trust the vision. Trust God. Trust God to send you help. Trust God for the provision. Trust God. Yes, yes, he's proving it. He's providing. Come on, Lady Deb. Come on. Come on. He is providing help. Yes, he is. Let's keep going. We're in Psalms 89 right now. Uh, verse 19. He said, I have given help to one who is mighty. And then he said, I have exalted one chosen from the people. Why are you here on tonight because God gave you a vision. He chose you. You got here because he chose you. You don't have to be perfect, but God chose you. You might be grand, good, big, bad, but God said, I chose you. I chose you to carry this vision. I chose you for this promise. I chose you for this purpose. I chose you for this destiny. Think it not strange. I'm here stirring up the pot. I am here stirring you up to inspire you. Hold on to your vision. God is sending you help. 2019 is your year to carry this vision out. Amen. Trust God. Trust God. I am just a mouthpiece for God. I am just a vessel being used by him. Praise the Lord. Can you? You answer that question. Can you? So we keep going. We're in Psalms 89, uh, verse 20. It says, I have found my servant, David. We all know David um, was not perfect. David was not even the first choice of his father. David was not the first choice of his family, but God chose him. See, when you're chosen, it doesn't matter what anybody else says about you. It doesn't matter um, how anybody tries to come at you. When you are chosen and you know who you are and who you are serving, that all that other stuff doesn't matter. God sent me, God sent you here so that you can be stirred up, so that you can be inspired to keep on going. Don't let the vision die. Amen. It goes on to say that I have found my servant, David. I have found my servant, Debbie. I have found my servant, Liz. I have found my servant, um, Tammy. I have found my servant, Terry. I have found my servant. And it says, with my holy oil, I have anointed him. God gave you a vision and he has anointed you for the vision. God chose you for the vision and he has anointed you for the vision. I just need you to just get all good in Psalms 89. I need you to get all oily in Psalms 89 because God said, I have anointed you for this vision. Yes, it doesn't matter how they hate. Keep going. Yes, yes. Praise God. Praise God. Yes, let's keep going. It says that with my holy oil, I have anointed him and with whom my hand shall be established. So God is saying, God is saying he is going to establish the work of your hands. What God has given you vision for, he is going to establish it. Amen. And he is going to send you help so that it can be carried out. It also says in verse 21, also my arm shall strengthen him. God, yes, get all oily in it. Get all oily in Psalms 89. 
God is not only going to oil you down and anoint you for it, but he's going to strengthen you. He is going to strengthen you with his hand, with his arm. God is going to strengthen you. Thank you, Sister Rhonda, for sharing the video. I appreciate it. Anybody else want to share? Somebody else needs to hear this word. Share and give thumbs up and hearts. Amen. The more interaction, the more um, uh, comments that you make, the more interaction um, Facebook or Periscope will give. Amen. So let's keep going. So God said, not only am I going to oil you up, but I'm going to give you strength. Verse 22, Psalms 89 and 22. It says the enemy shall not, not outwit you. The enemy, let me say that again to you. The enemy shall not outwit you. The enemy is not going to be smarter than you. So even if somebody reads your vision, even if they try to take your vision and steal your vision, it's really not yours. It's really God's, but God chose you. So they're not going to be able to take it. They're not going to be able to duplicate it. They're not going to be able to run with it. God's not going to allow them because what does it say in Psalms 89 and 22? Psalms 89 and 22, it says, the enemy shall not outwit you. Hello? God said, I'm sending help for the vision. The enemy is not going to be able to outwit you. He says, nor the son of wickedness, um, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. So guess what? The devil is not going to be able to afflict you so much so that you won't be able to carry the vision. God said, no, the enemy will not be able to afflict you. You have been chosen for the vision. You are a visionary on purpose. God has a purpose, a plan, a destiny, a promise for you. And that vision will come to pass. Verse 23 says, I will beat down his foes before his face and plague those who hate him. So God is going to handle up on those that are coming against you. Yes. Yes, yes, come on, come on, Sister Liz. This was your word for yourself this morning. Amen. Come on, Sister Liz. I had to I had to share this word this morning too, Psalms 89. And that's what God gave me. And God was like, this is what I want you to teach too. I want them to know that I'm gonna beat down their foes before my face. So I'm gonna see God knock out the enemy in front of me. Come on, somebody. God is going to knock out your enemy right in front of you. He said he's going to um, plague those who hate me, those who hate you. God is saying, I'm going to plague them. You know what he means by plague? Guess what he did with the um, with Pharaoh? He brought what? Plagues on them. He brought fleas. He brought frogs. He brought um, the, the blood. He brought uh, death to the house. Come on. So what God will do to your enemy is way more than you can do. Don't fuss at him. Don't get mad at him. God's got him. God's got him. And God's going to allow you to see <laughs> them fall. God's going to allow them to see, the, see, you, uh, see them get their black eye. God's going to allow it. Amen. Verse 24 says, but my faithfulness. Somebody say, God is faithful. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. God is saying his, his merciful and his, and his faithfulness is going to be with who? With you. Why? Because remember when we read Habakkuk 2, 2 and 3, he said that the vision will um, come to pass at its appointed time. The vision will come to pass at its appointed time. Amen. So the vision will not fail. Let's keep going by God's mercy and his mercy is new when every morning by his mercy and God is more faithful than we, we will ever be. So because of his faithfulness and his mercy, your vision is going to go forth. It also says in verse 22, and in my name, his horn shall be exalted. Now, have y'all seen those horns where they'll blow? Hey, pastor, thanks for coming in. You have you seen those horns? that they blow that is made out of like a ram's horn, but it makes a noise. Okay. It's singing here in verse uh, 24, the second part, it says, and my name and in my name, his horn shall be exalted. So when they blow that horn at a ceremony or a service, everybody can hear it. Right? So God is saying, just like the horn is blown, everybody is going to see the vision 
Everybody is going to see the vision. Like Just like the horn is blown, there's a great cloud of witnesses that is going to see this vision being carried out. Just like as loud as that horn is blown, God is saying, it shall be exalted. This vision shall be exalted. This promise shall be exalted. This um, destiny shall be exalted. It's going to come to pass, but guess what? It's not going to be little bitty where no one can see it. It's going to be exalted. It's going to be big. It's going to be huge. Amen? Let's keep going. That's why there's not a lot of people on my scopes. Why? Because God gives me a prophetic word. And not everybody wants to receive this word. Some people are skeptics and they're like, eh, whatever. But when it hits you in your belly, when, when it hits you in your knower, yeah, in your knower, when you're in your Holy Ghost knower, when it hits you in your Holy Ghost knower, then you know that it's for you. Other people, y'all get off the line. Y'all get out the way. Maybe share it so somebody else that it's for can get it. Amen. And keep pushing through to the vision so that their vision can be manifested. Amen. Let's keep going. Verse uh, 25 says, also, I will set his hand over the sea. Now, when you get to a sea, if you've ever been on a seashore, can you see the end of the seashore? Can you see the other end? No, you can't. When God gives you a vision, you can see a, a end of the vision. You can see what he wants, but you can't see the whole vision. Amen, somebody. You can't see the whole thing. See, when I get to the sea, and he said here in verse 25, also I will set his hand over the sea. That's something great. You can't see all of the sea. You can't see all the way down the depths of the sea. You can't, even if you're underwater, you can't see all the way all the way north, all the way south, all the way. It's endless. But God is saying, I'm going to set your hand over the sea and his right hand over the rivers. So there's multiple ways that God is going to bless your vision. Why? Because he's sending help for your vision. There's multiple ways. Let me say that again, because I'm encouraging you. I'm pushing you to keep going with your vision because why you're a visionary. You have been chosen for this. You have been anointed for this. You have been called for this and God is going to bless the vision. Amen from the, the sea and from the rivers. So there's going to be multiple ways that God is going to bless your vision. Bless the vision that he gave you. Trust the Lord. Trust that I am a prophet of God. Trust this word on tonight. It's not for everybody, but if it hits you in your Holy Ghost nowhere, it is for you. Amen. Let's keep going. We're still in Psalms 89. And if we don't get to finish, I was trying to get to 37. If we don't get to finish, guess what? That's your homework. That's, that's homework for your vision because God chose you for it. God give you all of this oil. Amen. So that you can get all oily with it. Amen. Let's keep going. Verse 26, 89 and 26. He shall cry to me when you, when it gets hard, cry out to God. You are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. When God gives you a vision, it is on a foundation that cannot be shaken. The rock. God is our rock. He is our salvation. He is our father. He is our God, right? So when God gives you a vision, see, it's a vision that no man can stop. It's a vision that no man can stop. And guess what? I'm here to tell you, don't be that man that tries to stop the vision that God gave you. Let me say it one more time. Don't be that man. Don't be that woman. When God gave you the vision, I got an amen on Periscope. Praise the Lord. When God gave you that vision, don't be the one to stop it. Don't you be the one. Why? God said, I have put it on a rock, a rock that is higher than ours, a rock that is solid, and your vision will come to pass. It might tarry. It might have taken a little bit longer, but God said, trust the vision. Trust the provision. Trust the help for the vision. Let's keep going. Verse 27, we're in Psalms 89 and 27. Also, I will make him my firstborn. Oh my God. The highest of the kings of the earth. So guess what happens to the firstborn? The firstborn gets the greatest inheritance. The firstborn gets the first and not the last. So God is saying, I'm giving you the same, the same 
blessing. The same blessing that I gave my son. Mm, mm, mm. Why? Because you've been chosen. Stop saying you're not worthy. Stop saying you're not educated. Stop saying you can't do it. Stop saying that. It says right here. Also, I will make him my firstborn. I'm not saying that you're Jesus, but what I'm saying is he's engrafted you into his kingdom. And if you um, got the lesson from yesterday when we were talking about kingdom, the thing about kingdom is you have, you have citizenship. And so when God brings you into the family of royalty, you have citizenship, you have rights, you have privile privileges that foreigners don't have. That people that aren't part of the family don't have. God's saying, I'm giving you this. I'm giving you the vision for a reason. So carry it out. Let's keep going. It goes on to say um, in verse 28, the mercy I will keep for him forever and my covenant shall stand firm with him. God has made a covenant. See, you entered into a covenant when you said, yes, Jesus come into my heart, come into my life. I want to be saved. I want to be made whole. Uh, you entered into a covenant. You entered into a kingdom. You entered into a citizenship. Amen. You entered into, yes, you did. And so God is saying that you have these rights and you have these privileges and your vision is from him. And so he's going to bless it to be carried out no matter what. Guess what? A covenant is a long term course of action. Let me say that again. A covenant is a long term course of action. And when you're on course, God is going to allow it to be carried out. Guess what? The vision that God gave us to start Power of the Gospel Ministries, September 10th, 2000, is still going on today. Um, January what day is this? 30th, 2019. 19 years later, the vision is still going on. Don't be the one to stop the vision that God gave you. Do not be that one in the name of Jesus. Let's keep going. So he um, had a covenant with us. Verse 29, uh, Psalms 89 and 29, his seed also I will make to endure forever and his throne as the days of heaven. So guess what? Guess what? You are the seed. You're the seed. And guess what? Your children are what? Your seed. So it's going on for what? Generation to generation. Hmm. Hmm. It's not something that God said, oh, it's going to die tomorrow. No, no, this is not a fly by night thing. The vision that God gave you is something that is meant to come to pass. Amen. And to be carried out. Amen. Yes. The devil is a whole lie and not able to see it. Yes, 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 yes. God is good. <coughs> and you will see this. Amen. Sister Rhonda. Verse 30 says, um, if his sons forsake my law and do not walk in my judgments, if they break my statutes and do not keep my commands, then I will punish their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. Nevertheless, my loving kindness, I will not utterly take from him nor allow my faithfulness to fail. So even if we get off track, even if your kids, kids get off track, God is saying, I might punish them. I might... Spank them, but I'm not going to allow the vision to fail. The vision will not fail. Come on, somebody. I hope you feel the anointing like I do. Um, it says uh, in verse 33, that was Psalms 89 and 33, nor will I allow my faithfulness to fail. It says my covenant I will not break. When you enter into a covenant, a vision covenant, God is saying, you have entered into a vision covenant and now it will not fail and it will not break nor alter the word that has gone out of my mouth. God is saying the words that came out of his mouth will not be altered. So guess what? Your vision will come to pass. Your vision will come to pass. Amen. Your vision will come to pass. Oh, I lost people on... Um, Instagram, man. 
All right, well, we're going to keep on going. As um, it says, it will not break, and the word um, that has gone out of his lips, he sworn it by his holiness, and he will not lie. It says in verse 35, he will not lie to David. Guess what? God is saying on tonight, I am not lying to you. The vision will be um, carried out. God is saying, I'm not lying to you, Debbie. I'm not lying to you, Brother James. I'm not lying to you, Lady Miyoshi. I'm not lying to you, Professor Gaynor. I'm not lying to you, Sarah Terry. I I'm not lying to you. Uh, the, it's going to come to pass. It's going to come to pass. God has chosen you. He has anointed you. He's made you a visionary. You will carry it out. He's going to give you provision. He's going to give you um, stuff as far as the sea, as your hand can go over the sea and your hand over rivers. He's giving you multiple multiple areas and multiple ways to carry out this vision. And he's sending you help. He's sending you assistance to make it easier. He's sending you guidance. He's sending you solutions, advice, helping hands. He's sending you just what you need to carry out the vision. Y'all continue to get oily in Psalms 89. Continue to go back and read and meditate on Habakkuk 2, 2 and 3. Continue to believe God for your vision what do you need to do? Write it down and make it plain and share it. Because when you share it, people can help you with your vision. Amen. So I'm going to share. Um, I'm going to pray and I'm going to share a little part of my vision. And if there's anybody that wants to help me with it, I welcome you. Amen. So, um, Heavenly Father, we seal this word right now in the blood of Jesus. We thank you for this word. We thank you for making us visionaries. We thank you for making us helpers, Lord God, to be able to help one another, Lord God. If every part does their share, then there will be no one that's overwhelmed with the mega vision that you have given us. Lord, we thank you that you will... Um, you've given us the vision and you will give us the provision. Lord God, there will be nothing lacking in the name of Jesus, nothing broken. Lord God, we thank you that you are establishing everything that is needed even right now as we um, pray, Lord. We believe it is so. We thank you because you said you are faithful and merciful. And so you're going to carry it out. And when we think you're not, when we um, cry out to you, you will answer us. You answered with a vision in Habakkuk. You answered with a vision in Psalms 89. You spoke the vision to your holy one, to your anointed one, and you anointed us to carry out this vision. So Lord, do it in the name of Jesus. Let nothing fail. Let nothing break. Let it not return to you void. Lord, you said it and it is so. You said it to your servants on tonight, January 30th, 2019. Therefore, it will come to pass. It will come to pass. And it is so in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all so much for joining. But I would like to say a little part of my vision. What we are desiring is to start a, a resuscitation team, a resuscitation team. And uh, if you would like to be a part of our resuscitation team, we need people with technical skills, technology, um, musicians, uh, praise dancers, um, uh, people with, um, what do you call it, website, um, any kind of uh, musical, um, if you can handle like musical, uh, what do I want to say, what do I want to call it, like speaker sound system, technical sound system help. Anything like that. Um, or even help with editing a book. So let me know. I'm looking for a resuscitation team that will help with the vision for 2019. And so that's my vision. I'm not afraid to share it. And so if anybody can help with it, I appreciate your help. So uh, if you would like to donate, if this word has been a blessing and you want to sow a seed for the seed that was planted in you, um, I welcome it. You can do it through Cash App, um, dollar sign POG Ministries, dollar sign POG Ministries, and you can give that way. Um, or you can give directly to uh, dollar sign Crystal, my name, uh, capital M, capital P, lowercase wr, Crystal M Power. Uh, 
my whole name, dollar sign, Crystal, K-R-Y-S-T-A-L, capital M, capital P, lowercase w-r. Amen? And so, um, this word just blessed me. I'm going to get all oily in Psalms 89 and get all oily in Habakkuk 2, 2 and 3. And I pray that it really blessed you. Um, again, before you get off, it's a great time to share. Thank you so much for those who have shared. Thank you so much for um, those who have um, just sowed a seed. Thank you very much. And thank you for those um, that will be a help to somebody else. Amen. When you catch their vision, help them with their vision. So I love you guys. Know that Jesus loves you more. And have an awesome, powerful Wednesday night. And we'll see you next Sunday. We'll see you on Sunday. Um, either my husband or um, I know my husband will be preaching Sunday. So uh, you, you should see some word coming through. And if not, I will see you next Tuesday. The two of us, my husband and I, uh, do 30 minutes on Tuesday at 2 o'clock, 2.02. And Wednesday night, hey, I've been here for the last three years. I think I've only missed one Wednesday, well, two Wednesdays in the last three years. Come on, somebody. Being faithful over a few things. So 7.30 to 8.30 Central Standard Time. Love you guys. See y'all next time. God bless.